on to some business news for you now. Charles Pellegrin is back with us, of course, and uh, he's going to start by heading to the north slope of Alaska, where the Biden administration has scrapped oil leases. Uh, this is in uh, a wildlife reserve, though, isn't it? That's right, Stuart. The leases um, had been awarded uh, in the final days of the Trump administration on January 6th, 2021, actually. Other things took the headlines that day. They uh, were suspended six months later and have now been canceled on the basis of legal deficiencies. The move is a way for Biden to highlight his environmental credentials, especially after he supported the approval of other fossil fuel projects. Analysts see it as a mostly symbolic gesture, as there was minimal interest in drilling in the leased territory. The Biden administration has both pushed to curb use of fossil fuels with aggressive decarbonization effort targets, but also urged oil producers to boost production in order to reduce high energy prices. Well, this uh, confusing tightrope walk is in evidence in Alaska, where the White House approved the $8 billion oil drilling Willow project to Conoco Phillips a few months ago and now has scrapped oil leases in the Arctic Wildlife Refuge, in addition to, settling, uh, to setting new rules to prohibit oil and gas leasing in about 40 percent of Alaska's National Petroleum Reserve, another uh, protected uh, space in northern Alaska. All in all, there are 8 billion barrels of recoverable oil in the Arctic Wildlife uh, Refuge. U.S. reserves, as a point of comparison, stood at 44 billion barrels at the end of 2021. Got some more energy news for you now. Plans strike on two large liquefied natural gas sites in Australia has been pushed back by a day. That's right. This says uh, talks between operator Chevron and unions have been extended. A series of uh, work stoppages over pay and conditions were supposed to start this Thursday, but workers have delayed action until 6 a.m. Friday, Perth time. Uh, it's midnight in Central European time. Concerns over the strike have pushed up natural gas prices in recent days. Chevron's uh, two plants in West Australia account for more than 5 percent of global liquefied natural gas capacity. Markets time then, Charles. What's uh, happening on the markets? Well, at the open in uh, Europe, uh, trading uh, lower as, uh, as investors uh, are uh, awaiting key EU data on second quarter GDP growth and uh, the employment rate for the same uh, period. As you can see, the Paris CAC uh, down a quarter of a percent. The DAX in Frankfurt down over one third of a uh, percent. Let's also have a look uh, at uh, how Asian markets are faring, all uh, trading uh, lower after a sell-off on Wall Street finished at the close on Wednesday. You can see the Nikkei closing the session down almost three quarters of a percent. Hang Seng down over all close to a one and a half percent lower. And investors in Asia, they're kind of assessing, aren't they, the latest trade data coming out of China? Mm -hmm. Chinese exports in August fell 8.8 percent, according to the latest customs data showing the persistent slump in trade there. Imports declined 7.3 percent a sign of more damage to the country's struggling manufacturing sector, and yet another indicator underlining a weaker-than-expected Chinese post-pandemic recovery. On the plus side, these reductions uh, aren't as steep as what analysts had predicted. Now let's cross uh, to the other side of the Taiwan Strait now, where the annual Semicon conference is taking place. Mm -hmm. It's a very important event uh, for the uh, semiconductor industry, which is uh, undergoing some, some pretty huge changes for uh, decades. Production was concentrated in East Asia, but the trend now is more towards bringing supply chains closer to their final markets in order to reduce dependence. Our Taiwan correspondent, Lucie Barbazange, spoke about this trend to people inside the chip industry. Taiwan is the world leader in semiconductor manufacturing. It produces 90% of the world's most advanced chips. Recently, the US and Europe have re-entered the fray. Supply bottlenecks in the wake of the COVID pandemic, coupled with geopolitical tensions surrounding the Taiwan Straits, prompted them to reduce their over-reliance on a single source. Taiwan's industry leaders don't seem to be alarmed by the trend. Moving production abroad actually increases the overall semiconductor costs. So what needs to be considered in the end is a resilient approach in terms of security. Yes, this does involve a more local approach, but at the same time it raises costs, so there will still need to be a certain degree of balance. 
Taiwan is ready to participate in this relocalization drive. TSMC, the Taiwanese semiconductor giant, has announced it will be opening factories in Europe, in the US and in Japan. The expertise is Taiwanese and the transfer will not happen easily. I believe that the know-how will remain in Taiwan, so in fact the possibility for TSMC to open factories in Europe, Japan or the United States is primarily an opportunity rather than a threat. So they are obviously attentive to what is happening. They will see if it creates obstacles to their development, but in fact they transform these obstacles into opportunities for them to find new niches or new market segments that they address less effectively. The investments that TSMC continues to make in Taiwan, in its factories and in research and development, is still much greater than overseas. No panic yet for the Taiwanese chip industry, which expects to remain a global leader. That's uh, Lucy Barbazan, our correspondent in Taipei, reporting there. And that's the end of the business wrap-up. Thank you very much. I'll uh, pay around our business editor there.